Welcome to episode 81, Zoom Etiquette for Adults. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Maloney. Thanks for joining me today. I want to talk to you guys about a really important subject, and that's Zoom. Zoom has become more present in everybody's day. Whether we have children or we're just doing it for work, there's so much need for Zoom. And so many people have such a little understanding of Zoom, it's time to really pay attention to Zoom etiquette. I don't know if you watched the DNC last night, but at the DNC, there was some serious Zoom bombs. And this is happening everywhere. It happened in my own company. I've seen people who have even been trained to use Zoom to have issues with it. So one of the things I want to talk to you guys first off about is relax. People see you in normal life. So one of the things we do, we get in front of these video cameras, we've got people watching us and we're like, where do I put my hands? How do I hold my hands? And that was actually one of the funny ones Biden did. He was like, not Biden, um, it was actually Sanders. He was talking with his people in the background, didn't realize he was hot mic'd and he was sitting there moving his hands around. It is, it's nerve wracking. What do you do with them? Especially when you're talking on a podcast, you're not sure what to do with them. Do you sell? Do you add them? Who knows what you do with them, but first off, relax. So we want to get yourself relaxed. We don't want to be thinking about what are other people thinking about us because normally we'd be in a meeting face to face. You wouldn't even see yourself. Like I wouldn't be looking at a mirror or reflection of myself during the Zoom meeting. So just get, get past that. That's not a big deal. Next, on time is late. We remember that in regular life, but we don't remember it in Zoom. And it's important. It's part of the whole social part of things. Your boss isn't going to stop the meeting to have short talk unless you have a boss that's really not that great at running a Zoom meeting. It's all about work. So it's going to seem very heartless if you don't get the earlier hangout late and if you don't put your picture up. So when you are in a meeting with people, we normally would see each other. So let's get rid of that habit of not putting our picture up. That's not good etiquette. We really want to put our picture up whenever it's appropriate to have the picture up. Of course, if it's a screen sharing event, then maybe you don't have your screen up. I get that. Like you might not have the video running while they're showing you slides and things. But when you're in one of those meetings where it looks like all the different squares and your square is just a black one, it usually tells the manager of it as well as the audience that you're not fully engaged. One of the things the managers and things want to do is they want to see face to face that you are there, that you're actually paying attention to what they're doing in the meeting, because it's really intimidating as a manager to speak to a screen that just has a bunch of names on it. You don't know if you're getting through to people. You can't see the person who has that help me look in their face. And this goes the same for your student learning. Don't allow your child to hide behind that camera. The problem with hiding behind the camera runs a lot of different directions, but one of the main ones is it allows, if you aren't watching me, if you aren't watching me, I could be somewhere else and I can't really move around as much because I realize I'm doing the mic. But if you weren't watching me, I can't be seen. So where did I go? What's going on? That's something that I wouldn't know. So in order for your child to learn well and to use correct etiquette, they want to be attending the school in camera. So you want to make sure you get them a good camera so that they're presented well. And then, it, then you think, well, if we're going to be on camera, what do we get to think about the backdrop, right? So do you have a backdrop like you have an actual location where it's behind you? Or do you have a backdrop where you actually take one of the digital backdrops that Zoom gives you to hide where you are? You have to make that decision. But to not learn the tool of Zoom, you would think, well, I'm in an ugly house and I'm really embarrassed about my place and I don't want really you have digital backgrounds. I could have this background just be white. I could have it be green. I could be in the rainforest. I could be wherever I want. We're in the modern day world where these things are able to happen and very easily. So think about getting a good background if you're not used to it. Go in there and play with it. They have Zoom free accounts. It's a great program. There's also a lot of other ones. I'm just using the word Zoom kind of indiscriminately just because they tend to be the industry leader right now, but realize there are a lot of different technologies that'll get you the exact same place, whether it be Google or any of the others like FaceTime, we have WhatsApp, we have Facebook, Messenger, lots of different places to talk live. My company, we can do it right through our CRM system. So just make sure you learn to use it. Next up, the mute button. This one's crucial. This one can be real embarrassing. You come in and you say something and it's live and you didn't realize it. So get into the habit immediately of muting yourself in the room. If you're not gonna be saying anything, mute right away. And then if you are gonna be saying anything, decide whether it's worth muting and unmuting or to mute right away and use the space bar. Most of the time in the programs, just like Zoom, when you hold the space bar down, it unmutes you. So you don't have to actually mute yourself. This is a good safety net. Why is that a good safety net? Because you're able to use that mute, unmute feature, but you know you didn't leave your finger pressing it down. So you don't forget to do it again. Forgetting to hit the mute button can be a deadly flaw when it comes to losing your job when you say something bad about your boss. So when you say something bad about the program or you rat somebody out or you say something out loud or you walk by like your kid walks by naked, like 
these things really are happening because people are forgetting that like see all this ground that you could see in the background and it's there and there could be things in it that shouldn't be in it. So thinking about your good environment for that ultimate Zoom call is really important because remember if your kid's in school and they're at class and their friend's sitting over here in the back corner, that's not really appropriate to school. So we need to treat Zoom for what it is, which is actually a digital meeting. So you wanna set aside the time that you actually need to do the meeting. You can't treat it like, I'm just gonna go into it like a video and watch a little and leave, or you're not gonna get the value out of the meeting. And if your company does Zoom meetings and you're not getting the value out of them, you risk losing your job. You risk running into problems overall, retaining your employment because of the fact that your boss knows that you're not involved with the meetings. Now, there's lots of different times where the meetings go too long. That's the other etiquette. As a boss, learn to write notes ahead of time, get yourself prepared, and be ready for what you're gonna talk about, and be very pointed with the subject, and realize that you've gotta constantly be moving that screen. You can't just leave them on a stagnant black screen talking to them, make charts, graphs, Maybe just a graphic that says the most important topics of the day that they can read over. Things to keep them entertained. Turn the video on. Have music. Things that get people's brains stimulated that is going to make them keep there in front of the thing. So if you're a person running a Zoom event, you want to think about in a real life event. What would make it more exciting and how do I encompass that to Zoom? How would I make Zoom be a more comfortable experience for the person ultimately and to get them a better connection with me, the Zoom host, and that way they're, they're not just kind of in la-la land staring at a computer screen. They're they're actually engaged. So that's also a point where asking pointed questions, calling somebody out and saying, hey, Brian, what do you think of that? Or, hey, Mike, what's your thoughts there? Hey, hey, Aaron, why don't you let the people know what you think in the room? And ask people questions and, and hold people accountable. That helps the room be better and you can help pay better attention altogether. It actually engages everybody. Next up, I hear a lot of people talk about like, it's a little bit awkward because you can't let someone know they're doing a good job or it's a little awkward because it's hard to talk over each other. Well, there is a raise your hand button and a clap button. Learn to use those. So when you think someone's doing a good job, clap for them. They see it come across their screen. It's just like when you get a little like on Facebook or someone stars your thing. It's like, we get that little sticker when we're a little kid. It's, it's that appreciation. It gives that motivation to keep the talk going, but it's also a respect thing, and this is all about etiquette, as well as raising your hand. Just going while somebody is reading and like going through something very important and saying, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, and breaking their chain of thought. In Zoom, it's a lot different than it was in person. We can usually break our train of thought in person and come right back to it. In Zoom, sometimes it leaves you feeling helpless when someone breaks your train of thought. But simply raising your hand in that same room can get you the same type of attention, but when it's appropriate for them, they can answer it. A lot of these rooms will be using moderators that will send the questions over to the host. Now, keep in mind, there's a chat room in there. A lot of people wonder how do multiple people talk. Well, in the chat room, be careful of a couple things. Number one, there's one-on-one -on -one chat where you send a chat out to somebody else. But then there's the whole group chat, and then there's the group chat with the moderators, or there's just the moderators. Be careful what you select and who you send the message to. Don't send, hey, this guy really stinks across the broad spectrum thing. This happens all the time. Pay attention to that you're sending it to the person that you think you're sending it to. Better yet, save the comments for a phone call because if you do it wrong, you can get yourself in trouble. So the same way that you wouldn't say things in like a room with somebody because you might have them overhear you, think about that when you're thinking about Zoom. Treat it like you would treat your normal business and I guarantee that will help you find more success with this stuff and less accidents because you can't make those accidents happen all the time. When you make accidents happen all the time, you're gonna have issues. You're gonna have places where people are angry with you or you lose your job because of some stupid little mistake like hitting send all or things like that. So just be very careful when it comes to that stuff. Next up, let's talk about the screen share. When you're screen sharing, there's a few things you wanna talk about. First off, if you're a host, you're screen sharing, remember people could be recording your screen. Do not show private and sensitive material. Do not show things that other employees within the company should not have seen of each other's and realize that they could take a screenshot or pause it and they can see it indefinitely. So if you slide by a quick picture that wasn't supposed to be up or you whatever, you might think it's gone, but if your company records Zooms or you record Zooms or even just someone took a screenshot or someone took their cell phone out and took a picture of the screen, which is the best way to have them not know that it happened, 
these things are really out there. So intellectual property, things that may be embarrassing, things that maybe you shouldn't even have on your computer in the first place. Be aware that when you invite people onto Zoom and you share your screen, that it might show all the links you've been to. If you start typing in the hyperlink bar, does it fill in some nasty thing that maybe you shouldn't have been on on a work computer? People are getting themselves in trouble left and right on these Zoom calls and it's embarrassing. First off, you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, but then if you're doing it, you should be more careful, but it's because they don't understand what's going on. They don't understand how the technology works, so people are getting themselves in trouble. Same thing goes when you let an IT person into your computer. Realize when you go to the cell phone store and you hand over your phone to an 18-year-old kid, he's going to go through all your photos, whether you like it or not. And so if you have things on there that compromise you or that may be illegal to documents and things that people should not be in, when you let an IT person into your computer, you better be careful. If you don't want them seeing what you're doing, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Maybe you should be using in private browsers. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing, but you have to be careful in the idea of when you put people into your screen, they're in your zone. You may feel safety in your phone, you may feel safety in your computer, but when it breaks, who goes into it and where do they go? Also, when you are on a Zoom and you go and you let someone take over, what did they take out of your computer? You need to pay attention to these things. This isn't just etiquette for you. This is etiquette for your clients. This is etiquette for your business, for breaking non-disclosures, from breaking all these different things that can be broken. Remember, the world's a small world, and we have this six degree of separation thing and a lot of different things like that, where you realize, like, I know them and they know them, so they each know each other. So be very careful when you're doing all this. Know what's supposed to be shared and know what's not supposed to be shared. So at the beginning, we talked a little bit about the room and all the different things that you should be doing there. I wanted to cover one last subject. So I don't care how you dress, what you want to dress like, but you should at least dress when you go. So there's been stories of people not wearing pants, not knowing that they're on film and stuff. I suggest getting dressed when you go to work. So I'd suggest when you're in a business meeting, you wear pants to the business meeting. I know that sounds funny to some. I would say I would try to dress like normal to gain respect because people still judge you by what you look like. Um, I don't really have a personal preference of dress up or not dress up, but I don't judge people, but I can tell you most people do. So it'd be best to just make a decision that it's based on people judging you. So really the biggest thing to remember in etiquette with Zoom and everything else is just be polite. Do what you'd normally do. Even heck, do better. Learn how to leverage this new technology. Make sure you have good backgrounds. Make sure you use space bar pauses. Make sure you aren't talking to people about things that you shouldn't be in meetings. Make sure you have good technology. Make sure you have stable internet connection. Make sure that you have the right devices to get on. Take some time to do some like self-studies. Maybe Zoom with your kids instead of making a phone call to them so you can see what what they're doing and see how they're doing it and learn how to talk with them so that you can learn how it goes. These are all things we can do. One thing we don't want to do is shell up and not learn because the world's never going back. This isn't COVID, people. This is the future. So if you don't understand that, you really need to open your eyes to it. Thank you so much for listening to this week's podcast. I hope this helps you put your pants on for Zoom and not get yourself in trouble. Have a great week. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, reach out to me, PM me, DM me, whatever works best for you. If you haven't yet subscribed to the podcast, please do so. Make sure you subscribe to the newsletter, jump over on Facebook, check out the group, read all the blogs. I'm giving out a lot of great information here. Share it with your friends. I appreciate everybody and have a great week.